my name is Alexander Hayers. I'm working in the German pre-sales or technical sales organization for Polarion. Um, actually, German is wrong. It's in the German, Austrian, Switzerland organization. And one of my tasks since I would say rather two, two and a half years is now to drive the Polarion automotive template or package uh, which we have. And that's what you see already on the screen. And I, I recall that some of you being present today are already in touch with me uh, with regard to that package, at least for the first version. And today I'm uh, happy to tell you a bit about this year's roadmap. So it has been quiet after we uh, released this in May, I think last year, our first version, which is called officially 1.0.4. And for today, I have then the pleasure to say what's coming next. So um, development goes on. We have been in, in, in a lot of customer engagements, um, luckily. So it's really paying off. Um, and some of the feedback uh, you see already in this release, but much more to come in the next. Uh, but enough. As a starting point, let me really show you first on slides and then I switch later also to give you a sneak preview um, and in the live environment of what's coming. So, um, Polarian Automotive version 2404. Now somebody may wonder, oh, well, 2404, that's typically the release numbering of Polarian, which indicates April. And now we have already June. Yeah, sorry for that. We <laughs> We have been a bit delayed. Uh, it was the, um, the the ambition to release together or close to Polarion, um, but still we stick to the numbering scheme. Um, and now you can indicate already when it will be available. So uh, for those of you who are new, the automotive package consists of two functionalities, so to speak, function safety according to ISO 2626.2 and Cybersecurity according to ISO um, 21434. Um, and starting with the modifications we have done for function safety, um, that's more or less, um, let's say, some polishing on the surface. Um, and that is mainly coming from our UX team uh, who required, especially for colorblind people, to do some modifications. Um, so you will see really some, some as I just said, um, some surface polishing um, and, and you see it already on the screenshots. Um, so we have a streamlined menu guidance uh, with the, with the um, menu, um, 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 menu items you see on top. Uh, we have the, the swim lane um, slightly modified, some coloring schemes, and we corrected some errors under the hood. Luckily, there was not much in. So it was working quite stable, but still we got some, some defects on it and that has been fixed. Um, and that is already all we have done for the function safety one. Um, and that brings me then to a bit larger um, portion for cyber security. Um, cyber security has gone as well or has received as well some polishing on the surface. Again, trying to align the two templates to have it in a more common way of working. So you see the same menu structure now um, for people working on function safety and people working on cyber. That's exactly now a kind of similar let's say, maneuvering around the, the reports. Um, but then again, we have UX work done. Um, we have enhanced a bit to um, also show, for example, um, some diagrams, if you have any coming from Enterprise Architect, from Rhapsody, or wherever you do your modeling, that's also possible now to include. Um, and then it's really, um, a major rework under the hood. So from version 1 or 1.0.4 to this new version, we have completely restructured the data model in order to be prepared for the future, in order to be prepared for, for a larger amount of data. So um, unfortunately, you have to go um, in a migration step for those of you who have been working already with cyber. Um, 
we have tried to, to do it as smooth as possible. I show it in a second what, what it is doing, um, but still you have to do something. And then as this was one of the, the major uh, comments we received, um, we have now with the um, updated or enhanced support for the clause 15, which is the risk treatment um, support or risk treatment handling. Um, and you will get some hands-on information um, in at, at the release point or release time, how you can incorporate the data from cyber and of course from function safety in your uh, normal development environment or development lifecycle projects. Because that is something where we are really proud of with Polarium, that we have a seamless data flow. We have really the information flow um, for the lifecycle work, so normal project development of any kind, as well as um, um, the um, security and safety analysis. And one thing you may spot not here, but when I now switch to, um, let me stick to cyber directly. When you switch to the cyber view, uh, we have a new icon set. And that also is paving the way for making the um, cyber security work being more generic available for other industries than automotive. Of course, automotive stays in this context here. It's still the 214.34 for cyber, but nevertheless, um, all industries affected by cyber security and, and we want to extend it more and more. Um, and also this was feedback we received. Besides this, um, let me just simply continue what has been or what has changed. So if you really go on, on this item view, it looks pretty much the same on the first glance, but you see already some, let's say, different color, coloring schemes. It's aligned with function safety now. Um, you see now here that we have another section, which is the detailed risk view, and that exactly is the handling of the clause 15, where depending on what you what you say or what you decide as the um, risk treatment, um, you see more information. So um, we have the split up into the four treatment handlings, reducing, sharing, retaining, avoiding. Um, so everything is appearing here in a, in a more detailed list with the cybersecurity goal handling, with the claim handling, whatever comes according to the, um, according to the um, um, uh, ISO standard. Let me pull also out one, uh, let me go for the threat scenario um, here um, that is um, also something being changed. So one new icon, um, highly awaited, I think, it's the deletion option. And that also came with the restructuring of the data model. Now we are able to directly delete things completely from any level. Um, in the report, so you don't need to, to, to fiddle around with the JSON structure anymore. And you may already spot here that we have the safe option. So um, let's go to the tech path, maybe at a better example. And you see if I'm going to change here something, so you can add this now, you see here um, it's highlighted and I have now a generic safe which is directly taking the edits as you need. And then you are in an, let's say, more convenient editing way. And all this is possible, just repeating myself, by um, changing the data model. And for doing so, you find um, one new report in the documentation section, which is the template migration report. And that does nothing else than automatically scanning for the information you have. So it goes in the project where you apply it. It fetches the items as a top node, and then it is um, really starting the migration. So if you hit the button, you see as a result, item is already migrated. Or if you apply this for the first time, it will tell you exactly what it has done. That's the way forward, and we try to make it as smooth as possible. Quick view on function safety. 
so that's the function safety portion. And as I said, it's just uh, kind of polishing on, on the surface. So you see here that, that this remains exactly the same from a navigation point of view. Let me just directly jump into the HARA. Let me select the example data. <clears throat> and that is where you are now maneuvering around. So we, we, we reduce the, the upper menu bar a bit. Um, we have this um, aligned with the um, Siemens requirements on, on user experience. And we have changed the, the buttons um, in order, as I said before already, to make them more convenient for colorblind people to, to have that. And that's all what we did um, from a functionality point of view with regard to function safety 2404, server security 2404. Now, you may wonder, when is this available? So as you see, uh, we need to distinguish here a bit between whether you are running it on-premise or whether you are running it in our SaaS environment, Polar Linux. So on-premise, it's available in June. Now you can start calculating uh, what day we have today. So it's the 21st of June. Um, still, um, that is the plan. And I think we will manage to release before July 1st. So expect it somewhere at the end of next week. And that's new. Um, it's available from Support Center. So for those of you who have um, gotten the licenses, they can directly download it from our Support Center, where you also fetch the Polarin instances and so on. Polarin X will be um, a bit delayed um, because we are going to package this together with the 24 for Polarian version, which is also not yet out. But um, for all new customers on X, they get it then automatically. For the um, for the um, existing X customers, um, we want to allow you to update it yourself because we don't know whether you have configured it on your needs uh, if you have configured some things and we won't we do not want to just overwrite our changes and and ruin your things of course if you need support um, i'm happy to support you and 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 and, and provide additional information that's all for 2404 that's what is available pretty soon so we talk about days What's next on the menu? And then you see a long list at the moment. Um, again, we have listened to you um, from, from the feedback. Um, let me start at the, at the lower right corner because that is something which is really um, the most important thing which I would like to get out. And most likely, um, we try to do it already um, as a, as a pre-release, but let's see. Important to say, for everything what you see now on this slide, it's our plan. It's this famous disclaimer. It's not a guarantee that you get it. It's, a, it's what we plan. And we plan to have it uh, available around the Polarian release in October, so 2410. Um, but starting again with the software bill of material topic. So that is something which is the hot thing what we get. And that is what we are going to support you now with. That means you have your build chain, you have your CI, CD chain. You most likely have a build tool like Jenkins. And what we implement at the moment, and that's already ongoing, um, is a methodology to scan automatically for the build data and let Polarian handle the, um, the software bill of material then by means of building libraries, by means of building an overview. You have seen me most likely already talking about this in webinars. Um, if not, um, check for YouTube, um, the Polarian cybersecurity days. Um, I've been talking about this and, and that is now what comes really available, not only on slideware and videos. Um, and then we integrate with two um, initially with two vulnerability scanners. One is Velocify from the Siemens AG, and then the other one is our preferred OEM partner, um, Software Improvement Group uh, from the Netherlands, um, and those will, will provide additional information then and enrich the information for the software bill of material. And that is really something which we put under the topic um, cybersecurity um, ISO 21434 close 8, which is the continual scanning, so to speak. 
But again, just to repeat myself, this is also available certainly for other industries rather than automotive. And then on top, it, it's, it's going a bit uh, in the same way. <clears throat> we currently have, of course, the ability to work with large amount of data. But in fact, we expect, especially on the cybersecurity side, hundreds of thousands of entities to be analyzed. And um, the handling of big data, sorting, filtering, trying to really spot the real critical things that's high on the agenda as a second, let's say, main topic. And that's the reason why it's, by the way, uh, Mark Bolt here. And um, that's um, also something which is going to be um, introduced. And then, um, especially on the function safety side, um, a bit more convenient way to, to add it. At the moment, if you go in, cyber, in, in function safety tables, and you add a new hazard or, or failure mode or whatever, you are losing a bit context. Um, and that is something we are going to improve, somehow aligning the, the ways of working between cyber and fu uh, function safety. And that's what you see here. Again, let me repeat, plan for October is a lot. We hope to get it done. We do have the development resources, but still it's a lot of work and this is our plan and um, ask me then around the time uh, when I guess I will do another round of, of plan for you, uh, what we are going to deliver. And with that, I'm done with my stuff for today, what I wanted to present. There will be also a blog post um, when it's really available with a bit more, um, let's say, meat to the bones, especially on the process support. So 